So we're going to be continuing to look at the connections between the MCU slash Marvel Comics and the Gurmverse and Song of Ice Empire. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, first up is Melisandre again. I noted a lot of parallels between Melisandre and the Scarlet Witch, but of course another really big character is the Dark Phoenix. And the Dark Phoenix is essentially a kind of fire goddess. Uh, but again, we don't know what the story is completely with Melisandre, so we don't want to be premature, but there's a obvious visual parallel between the two. And then we get into the Thor universe, and there's a lot of interesting connections. For instance, even though Mary Jane and Jean Grey are sort of these generic uh, red-headed women, we also have Red Sanja, and in fact, in one comic, Mary Jane became Red Sanja, and of course, when we go to Game of Thrones, Sansa is sort of the stand-in. Now, I don't think George is going to mystically change Sansa into this warrior woman, but there is an interesting parallel between Mary Jane, Sansa, and Red Sanja. And building off of Sanja, although George gets a lot of credit with Brienne and sort of having a female knight, there are in fact a couple of female knights within the MCU. In fact, one of them is actually pretty prominent, though you may have missed her, which is a Sif in the Thor films as well as the Thor comic books and Sif is a very very powerful female knight who works for Odin and more into the Thor comics is the Enchantress who of course looks a lot like Cersei uh, but we have to be careful Cersei doesn't have any mystical powers as far as we know but there are hints that she may be a Targaryen so maybe George is gonna pay that off but again at this point we don't know for sure also on top of this, it's interesting that the Enchantress has a relationship with Heimdall, who is this kind of honor-bound soldier, and that's very close to the Jamie Lannister character. And finally, there's Loki, who is very, very similar to Littlefinger and being kind of a trickster slash manipulator behind the scenes. Uh, so there's an interesting parallels there as well. Probably one of the most really explicit borrowings that George takes is with Kitty Pryde. Kitty Pride is this very young female character with the X-Men, but interestingly she has a pet dragon, which of course should be very familiar with uh, Daenerys. And it's interesting too, she has a relationship with Colossus, uh, they're often paired as lovers, and Colossus is very big and tall and strong and muscular, which mirrors of course Daenerys and Drogo. There are a few differences, uh, even though Lockheed is a dragon, technically he's an alien. So he's an alien who takes the form of dragon, but he's not per se a dragon in the you know kind of song of ice and fire sense so but again there's a remarkable overlap between kitty pride and daenerys in the books and then we have quaith whose mask again it's a little different but it's very close to dr doom who also kind of a kind of faceplate for a mask uh there's even an interesting coincidence that dr doom and a lot of people forget this is that because he's often framed as a scientist he is a sorcerer right so he has mystical powers and he's actually been trained in the mystic arts and an interesting what if issue he's actually trained as a good wizard uh but obviously in his you know more mainstream version he's an evil wizard and of course of course Quaith does have powers she even has a vendetta against the maesters uh although we have to be careful that's a conspiracy theory but though i think that's one with a lot of uh backing evidence and the Maesters actually are very close to the Watchers in the Marvel Universe. The Watchers are supposed to be these kind of cosmic beings who observe events but don't intervene. That doesn't fit the Maesters exactly because there's a lot of evidence the Maesters, again, that's their role. They're supposed to be neutral, but they may be intervening in events sort of behind the scenes. But we don't know for sure. And finally, there's the Chameleon, who's a kind of shapeshifter in the Marvel Universe. He often uses disguises and he's a spy in many stories. And of course, that's very close to the Faceless Men, who often take different identities. Uh, the shape-shifting with the Faceless Men, we have to be careful. It's sort of unclear in both the books and TV, but I do think we can say that they are sort of shape-shifters, but they're, they have limited powers. All right, so those are the, some of the more prominent parallels between the Marvel Universe and the Gurmverse. Gurm and Thrones Analyzed. If you like the content, please hit the like button and or subscribe. Thank you for listening. Please drop down below, give a like and or comment. Thanks again.